Okay, can everybody see this all right? It's just yeah. like a spreadsheet. Yep. Okay, hopefully I don't talk as fast as I did last week. Last <laughs> week when I was going over a slow screen, I think I gave the whole presentation in like 30 seconds. Uh, my wife was in the other room and she's like, that's it? I'm like, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, she's like, I know what it is, but I don't think those guys realized what you're doing. Um, okay, guys. Um, my name is Robbie Bordholt. I'm a, uh, from Hobbs, New Mexico, which is the southeast corner of the state, uh, Repside, Texas. So we get a lot of spillover from uh, the Texas uh, kids. We still have lots of ideas from Texas Tech and uh, UTPB, which is a small school there in Odessa. Um, this is my going to be my 26th year coaching football. So everything I've learned in the last 26 years. I've thrown into my offense and try and keep it simple for kids, try and keep it simple for the adults to come in and coach with me uh, where they don't have to learn a lot. Um, it's just about learning terminology. Uh, what I've done here is planned out for the first three days of practice for next fall. Uh, hopefully everything works out for next fall. We don't have another COVID scare or, you know, practice like Co Coach Jason said, you practice for a day, you take three days off or three weeks off for COVID and you come back and you got a day to practice before you go out and play. And it makes it really difficult for the kids. Uh, I've actually stolen this PowerPoint uh, or Excel sheet uh, from a coach in North Carolina, a 92 mesh group. Um, I don't know if you guys ever watch him on YouTube or not, but he's got some really good ideas. Are you talking about Colthart? Yeah. Yeah, this, he's, is actually, yeah, this is actually yeah. his form. Um, one of the guys that coached with me two seasons ago really got fired up about watching that. And I said, you know, I, I can teach you that stuff. Uh, I've been blessed enough to work with friends with Coach Mummy. Uh, when I coached in college for three and a half years, his, the original offensive line coach for Coach Mummy, Coppers Cove, was our defensive coordinator for a season. And the year two, let's see, three years before, they started air raid coach money was at UTEP. And uh, my boss was actually the running backs coach when they ran the, what he called, what they call the ISO option, which is nothing more than the freeze option. If you follow old Syracuse film with Don McNabb and McPherson and some of those guys. But uh, uh, what we're going to start off with on day one is these are kids that have played football but they haven't played on the varsity terminology and the varsity uh, structure, what our varsity wants our kids to be able to do by the time they become freshmen. Um, in the last two years with COVID and sicknesses and everything, we've had to actually go out day one. Uh, we go out in helmets and shorts. Uh, we actually issue them, we, Jason, we talked about this last week. Um, we actually issue them everything, including their locker on the first day of school. So they have everything they need we don't, uh, that way we don't have to waste another practice period of handing everything out to them. Uh, so luckily, if we get to go out the first day, uh, depending on the weather, you know, if, it, if the temperature is so hot, we can't go out, then we can actually do some drills in the gym. We have a smaller gym uh, because vol your volleyball will be in the big gym, so we'll take the smaller of the gym. Uh, if it's raining and lightning, um, I'm kind of blessed. I have a classroom that's a portable right outside of our gym where we can actually go in the classroom. Um, have, we'll call the school district and say, please unlock the YouTube. And we'll uh, actually show them, show them some skills and drills uh, on YouTube. Uh, our school district will furnish the kids a laptop. Um, I've got the capability in my classroom to actually issue everybody a spiral notebook so we can teach them how to draw a place, uh, teach them how, what terminology is, that type of thing. But uh, day one, we're going to try and go out and we're going to just warm up. Uh, we have about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minute practice. Uh, we practice offense one day, defense the next day. Um, our head coach has blessed me where we can do offense first. Uh, he thinks it's a benefit to our defense because day two, we can actually put kids out there in the scout team and say, hey, give us white form, our white formation, and the defense can adjust. And all that is, is, um, an eight uh, air raid terminology that would be ace or two by two. 
And that way we can work on things that we worked on day one to give our scout team on day two something to work against. Uh, but we just warm up for about 5, 10, 15 minutes here. Uh, then we go to settle up drill, which is no more than settle and noose is what they used to call it. Uh, met with Coach uh, Franklin two, two summers ago on, on a Zoom call, and he said he was having to change the name of certain things for certain reasons. Uh, settle and noose was one of them. Uh, so they just changed it to settle up. Uh, listen to Ron Mackey yesterday for over an hour. He's changed his to settle up. Um, but we try and get an individual group with all three groups, whether it's the quarterback, the running backs, uh, or all four receivers, the offensive linemen. Everybody gets an individual period. And that's where we just sit down and we shrink everything or cut everything in half. Uh, so we do settle up for about five, 10 minutes here. And then we're going to start with our running game. Uh, we're a zone team. Uh, we run outside, inside zone. Uh, we also run GT counter. But for the first day, I want to run zone because I think zone mirrors everything up with what we do on the backside of where we run GT counter. So if we're running uh, four GT, uh, play side's going to the zone block, backside's going to pull the guard and the tackle. Hey, Coach, what each row represents five minutes? Uh, it's about five minutes, Coach. Yes, sir. Uh, it all depends on what else happens during that day. Uh, our head coach is big about having times on these squares here. I didn't even think about it when I when I stole this or got this from Crowthorpe uh, uh, about putting times. Uh, but he's big into having, you know, five, ten minutes on this. Um, I think it helps, especially uh, the last three seasons. Our third coach that we have has been a rookie. Um, we, ha we had a youth minister two years ago, this past two seasons, uh, counting last spring when we got to play football. Uh, we had a guy that hadn't even played football before. Uh, I, I take that back. I think he played in junior high, but I can't remember him playing in the high school. So to make it simple where he could understand it. Um, so these first two segments, we're gonna work on two and three zone which mirrors up with everything else we do when we come back to play action. And uh, we have a few RPOs that we run off of that's all off of the two and 300 series. Um, I want to try and put in a screen a day. And while we're installing this stuff, uh, everybody's working toward the zone or working on the same thing at the same segment. So if the quarterback and our running back are working two or three zone, the offensive line are working two or three zone. And then the receivers, um, I don't know about in your league, but are your kids a lot of times, if they see it's a zone play or a run play, they're just like, oh, well, I'm not getting the ball, so I'm just going to stay in here. Uh, so we've been, ended up installing a few RPOs off of that. So if we had run uh, three zone, we can turn around and run our 60 passing game off of it. We just tag it like 266, 267. And that tells the receivers, hey, I'm running 66 and 67 off of the zone play. Uh, gives them something to work on during the individual uh, time period. Uh, screens, the, the first two, first day is our 40 and 50 screen. This is what we talked about last week, which is our slow screen to our F back, whether it's to the right or to the left. Uh, the great thing about that is if we're running, for example, 50 slow screen to the left, uh, it mirrors up with our 90 H shallow because that's what the H is gonna run off of uh, the screen. So it eventually, uh, it, you're almost in, uh, installing two plays at one time. So you're in, installing the slow screen, but you're also in, um, installing the 90 shallow passing game as well. It's the same, same thing for our kids. Uh, the H runs the shallow, the Y runs the dig or the hunt route, and then the offensive line, uh, the offensive tackle that side blocks it the same way. Um, get a little water break in there. Uh, then we go into quick pass on the first day. We're trying to install uh, what we call 66. And out of ACE, that would just be a, a vertical or a more route by the outside receiver. Um, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. 66, outside guy runs a hitch, inside guy runs a go. Uh, so then we can put 360, 366 and 266 together. Uh, we also run a little bit deeper passing route with it's our, uh, here's our stick route. We can run, you know, 368, 268, 
and it's just a stick by the inside guy. We try and get a power forward type kid at Y. Uh, of course, you know, 12 and 13, 14 years old kids. Uh, they understand basketball, how to bridge up and get to the basketball. And that's what basically what I tell them, you know, run four yards, stick your butt out and try and shield off that linebacker. One, two, three, we read the, the more the stick and the swing route off of that. Um, and then we also try and install that same day our 90 passing ground because the, the 90s go with our 40s or our 50s. And that's all on day one. Uh, can I answer any questions before we go into day two and three? Yeah, I got to ask you a couple questions. Um, so how, many, how many coaches on your coaching staff? Just out of we have three. We have just, just three. Okay. So you might be similar to me. I'm kind of curious. Um, these the thing I told you last year, I think you had to do with just me and me and the other guys. So a lot of times, whether it was offense or defense, him, him or I were running two stations at once. So it's just, it was hard. It was, it was difficult. Um, I'm kind of, you know, being in New Mexico, you, you talked a little bit about the heat. I'm kind of curious about how you guys handle that piece. We're requiring, and, and Coach Jolly and Coach Nolan, they're both in Florida. So they know about the heat as well. I mean, in North Carolina, we have stipulations where if the heat index reaches certain, we're not going outside. Right. And um, on top of that, we're required by our county to, especially early on, when we're starting in late August, early, I mean, it's hot. It's, it's ungodly hot most of the time. We're required every 20 minutes to do like a water break, if, if that, even even maybe less than 20 minutes, every 20 minutes have a water break. So I'm, I'm trying to sit here and factor in water breaks into my you know, into my practice. And I saw that you only had what, one, one water break there. And I was kind of curious how you handle that because I mean, obviously that water break that, you know, sometimes if you're not, if you're not on top of it, it can eat a lot into your practice where they're kind of just goofing off. And all of a sudden, you know, a two minute water break ends, ends up being like eight or nine, you know, 10 minutes. You don't even realize what happened. You know what I mean? Uh, one of the things that, one of the things that we've been blessed with is uh, the first two years that I've been at the school, that we've had uh, kids that didn't want to play, but they want to be part of the program. Uh, the first year, our varsity head coach's daughter was uh, one of our managers, and we're blessed enough to have three or four kids, that, like I said, that don't want to play, but they want to be a part of something. So we hand them water bottles and fill up jugs full of ice and water, and they actually stay with the position. Uh, kind of like you would see in college, or you'd see, you know, big time high school, where you've got water kids or kids in charge of the water and they're just staying there with water bottles. Anytime a kid wants a water, the kid walks over, gets them a squirt of water and uh, you go on. Um, I, the, I, had, go ahead, I, I, I mean, I, what I've been doing, cause I've kind of played with this a little bit is I do have um, certain spots in my script where I have to go set some stuff up. Cause I'm like, I'm like you guys. I mean, there's only three of us. Sometimes there's four, but usually there's only three of us. So I got to, take trash cans and move them around, put them in the right spots. I got to move. And when I do that, there's just a couple of times and the kids know they're like, cause my practices are so the same <laughs> every single day. The kids just know. And I tell my kids also, since we're in Florida and it sounds like all of us are dealing with heat. I just be like, if you need water, go get water. Like, just go. They, they know. And I said, look, you don't get your reps. You don't get your reps. I mean, sorry. You know, and I, I tell the kids that too, when we're in routes on air and, team and they're always looking at me like coach when do I go in I'm like when you go in what do you mean tag somebody on the shoulder and go get in like it says so it's same with water like I just don't think it's my responsibility to to tell these kids what they have to do all the time I'm like if you're gone a lot getting water that's less reps yes so you know and so for me it kind of works out one thing I did last spring because we had it in the spring going from you know Kids wearing sweatshirts in the morning to wearing shorts and t-shirts in the afternoon to school. Uh, was I just started carrying two because we didn't have the the water girls, if you're with me, with us. So I just grabbed three water bottles and I just carried them to every station with me. I tossed the or I handed the ball the water bottles to the kid and said, take it with us. Or the you know, the quarterbacks, I always want my every quarterback to have at least one ball. So I was handing every quarterback and I only had two. I had each one of them grab a ball and grab a water bottle, and I grabbed a water bottle, and we went together. Um, when COVID was really bad, uh, last the spring before last, when it first started, we actually, kids couldn't share water bottles. So we had the kids bring their own water bottle. So I'm wearing, wearing a Sharpie on my T-shirt, and as they're stretching, so that 
five, 10 minutes of stretching. I'm walking around with a Sharpie writing kids' name on it. Um, and look, I'd, some kids didn't bring water. So I would just end up going back to my classroom or sending some kid that was hurt or making a phone call to somebody in the building and said, hey, there's a Walmart trash bag in my classroom. Fill it up with water bottles out of my classroom, bring it to me and bring me a Sharpie. And I was just signing kids' names on it during practice. And that helps a little bit too, I think, when you do it that way. All right. Anything else on day one? Or do I need with this so you guys can see the rest of it? Sorry. So, yeah, so on things seven. Seven. since it's offense only, what do you do on seven on seven? How how do you build it? Do you just build a defense? Yes, sir. Basically, we start with what we're gonna see uh, from our defense the next day. Uh, we're a three four team. So we see a lot of cover two and a lot of quarters. So I basically just tell the defense, hey, on the snap of the ball, safeties, you're deep, corners, you have the flats, outside backers, you have hooked the curls. And they don't really know what that means. So what I end up doing, there's little rubber discs about the size of a dinner plate. And I lay those out in one color for us and put the initial of the position the kids are playing. Because on day one, we're just running our base two by two set. We don't change formations, we don't motion. Uh, and I just line those up on the field for our offense. And then the off color, I tell the, the linebackers and DBs where to line up. And then on the staff of the ball, I just tell them, hey, you've got this corner, you've got that corner, you've got the flats, and you've got, you've got where you would you'd replace and where the corner started. Just something. Yeah. Go ahead, Coach. Um, can you scroll up just a little bit? Sure. Okay, so when – when do you forgive me? When do you? Uh, I know we're talking about install. When do when do you go over these concepts with them? Is there a, is like do you have a, a a Zoom? Do you give them a? I mean, you you mentioned like having them have a, a notebook. Do you do that? When do you do that? How do they know? Okay. It's, like you know what I'm saying? Okay, yeah. Before uh, Coach Jolly, before Coach Solon stepped in, uh, we were talking about. Uh, we're blessed where the last four weeks of school, between track season being over and us getting out of school, we're actually blessed enough to actually have the kids come out and practice where we can go over drills. We can start installing things. Uh, also, our varsity coach has a small camp that is from grades fifth grade through ninth grade, the incoming ninth graders where they actually have a camp and we try to mirror our terminology exactly with what the varsity is doing. So when they go to that camp, the kids that are sophomores through seniors help run that camp with the varsity. So the, the varsity kids demonstrate what the drill is. So if you've got receivers and you're working on settle up drill, you've got four receivers and four quarterbacks and they're the varsity quarterbacks and varsity receivers that are demonstrating these drills for the kids. And we just instruct, just you know, we instruct them uh, just like the varsity coaches, and try and keep it as close as we can. And then, and the camp's free. That's what I like about it. It's free. It doesn't. All it's going to cost as a kid, as we say, it costs you pillow time. Because you know, kids in the summer they're going to stay up till two or three in the morning playing Fortnite. And then, oh, I've got to go to camp in the morning. Mom gets me up at six. Um, and camp's only about two hours long. Because then the varsity has their practice before that, uh, and, it, and it just helps to have the varsity kids, you know, teach them the reps, teach them what to do, how to position your hands, how to catch the ball, see the ball with your eyes, catch the ball, tuck the ball with the offside arm, and turn your shoulders, and get up the field. So, hey, Co Coach Jolly, are you are you kind of alluding to? Uh whether or not it's useful to give the kids playbooks or video playbooks or to just teach on the field? Is that kind of the question? Because I, I struggle with that a little bit, like trying to decide if I want to, because last year I did video playbooks. Um, just did each one of my concepts was its own YouTube video. And then I distributed it out and it worked great. The only problem, I, I don't know, is a lot of work. And I, I almost feel like I could have just taught it during in, like just during each period, I could have probably just taught it. So it's like I'm kind of wrestling. I don't know if you guys have an opinion. Playbook, I, you know, playbook, teach on the field. Uh, I'm glad this. I've been wanting this kind of a meeting for a while because I've tried everything that they, you know I've 
I tried the kids don't need a playbook anymore. They didn't this and the other. And I, the only, the, I had my best success last season doing exactly what you said, Carrie, which was I'm going to, except I didn't have anything videos. I was basically using Matt's stuff and all you guys' stuff that you guys produce. I use those as videos. And then I actually made, on huddle and just printed out the things and put them in a little binder for them. And they went now, some of them didn't look it over, but those are the kids who didn't play much anyway. So I had kids drawing plays in my class and, you know, like it worked, that's what worked out for me. I don't know if it was just yeah, I mean, the I, kids. I think it worked too. I, it's a lot of work, but you could track on YouTube who, who watches too. I had kids watching it hundreds of times. I'm like, this is, I'm, I can't believe he's watched this kid's watching like 165 times our inside zone video. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's amazing. And yeah, yeah, kids are, so I think I'm, Coach Jolly, I guess that's where I'm at with it. I'm trying to figure out, like, it's a lot of work, but it did benefit. There's a ton, I mean, each one took me, I and mean, we've got basically 11 concepts, right? We got like six, six passes, uh, two screens, three runs, right? So it's like, 11 videos is actually more than and plus my pass protection video and my formations video so it's really it's like 14 videos you'd be surprised man it's a lot of work it took me like weeks to put that thing together so but yeah, i, I, really, I want to get on your guys' level i want to make some videos man i want i mean i i did the video thing too i um but see with me we have we have to have tryouts we still lot you know i i'm only allowed a certain amount of kids on the teams because i i can only do you know road games However many kids I can fit on a bus, that's it. So I don't get I don't get more than that. So I mean I have to kind of have tryouts. And now if we don't have enough kids to make a cut, then we're full go. We'll go ahead. And then, but what I do a couple, probably about a month and a half before school, I have my my AD put out a like an all call where it calls every kid, you know, eligible kid in the county essentially and says, you know, Coach Ross is gonna have a virtual interest meeting for football you know to kind of explain what what's to be expected and from there once i get those kids that are showing up with their parents say okay now now that i have you here now i want to schedule me meeting virtual meetings you know leading up to tryouts so that we can go over some other things so that they're more on field ready and that helped me a lot so i'm going to be doing that again because again like i i don't get i don't get a spring with them i don't get a summer with them i get them day one and that's it. So, you know, I had to utilize as much time as possible. So that's what I did. That's tough. Yeah. I guess I got an advantage being a youth program. I'm with them. Yeah. Spring. How are you installing formations? Are you kind of going over real quick? Hey, these are our formations real fast and then jump into the install of the plays. Okay. So that's kind of what I do. I, I will, I will sit there and I'll say, okay, here's our ACE formation. I'll, I'll actually have it painted out on the field already prior Say. Here's where H is. Here's where X is. Here's Y, and then uh, then we'll move five yards forward. There's early. There's late, and then we'll you know it's just so they can see the landmarks. And I'll say, okay, run up here, get in your spots. All right, next group, run up here, get, and this is what it looks like. And then then we jump into our install of whatever we are installing day one, which is usually four birds for us. Right. I, I've done that, and actually, I was talking to D'Amico that's on another channel on Friday nights about this a couple weeks ago. Because I've done that as well. Um, I can't paint it on the field, but I could take, we were talking about the little rubber mats, and I could lay those out there. Uh, everyone, about Thursday, uh, about the fourth practice, when we recycle this, this stuff, uh, we'll go what we call bandit drill, which is from Coach Mummy himself. Um, well, we'll actually do that during individual time. So this will change a little bit on the schedule where I'll, I'll signal white, and you'll go line up in white. In the second group, hey, I'll signal red. You run out and get in red. And we just rotate it all the way down the field. I mean, by the second time you've gone through it, you know what the colors are and what where you're supposed to be. Uh, the biggest hang-up I've had with kids is if we're in the middle of the field, great. But what if we're on the left hash? Now how does my formation change? You know, we're one of the teams that we always leave X on the left and Y always on the right. But, you know, it's still, if you're on that left hash, that Z's way over there on that sideline. He knows he needs to come over. Or if we're in our trip set where we bring the Z over and put him between X and H, now Y's by himself. I just tell him he needs to widen out and almost split the difference now from where his home position is with where the Z was. 
and we and we march it up and down the field like that during individual time, or we'll take time to do it, you know, uh, right after the uh, the water break right here in the middle, where kids are sitting there sipping water, like, hey, while you're sipping water, let's go over something real quick. Let's go over white formation. Let's go over blue formation, uh, because in this three day install, like day one, we're just doing our two by two set. Day two, we're just doing our uh, two back gun stuff, and then on the third day, we're doing our trips, our trip stuff. Uh, as I said at the beginning, we're the defense is bearing off of us. So day one, we're doing two by two. The second day of practice for defense, they're going against two by two. You know, Co Coach Ross, we we just put a period in. Um, I, I love what you're saying, Coach. I, I think I think that's the way I used to do it. But I got a tip from my high school coach. Um, I'm with 12, you know, 11, 12, 13, 14 year olds. Um, this year, 13, 14, and he put in what he called an operation period, and now we do it. So it's 10 minutes every single practice, um, and it's just communicate. It's formation, communication, tempo. And we do it every single, every single practice. So like the first, so to your point, coach Ross, the first couple of times you do operation, maybe the first three or four times we're just doing formation and we're just, I'm, I'm literally, I'm moving the ball. I'm making them run up to the ball. I'm going left hash, middle, right hash, middle, right, middle, left. I'm putting the ball all over the place and I'm stopping them and I'm correcting the Z or I'm correcting the X or I'm telling them, look, this is why your landmarks changing and trying to get them to understand why these landmarks matter. And it also gets the offensive line and the wide receivers and running backs quarterbacks all running together. Like they're getting used to running up to the ball together, offensive lines getting set up. And then on the next level, we start working our communication. There's a lot of communication. I'm sure you guys do the same. I signal to the quarterback, quarterback signaling to the receivers. He's verbalizing the call to the offensive line. That's a lot of, that's a lot of shit for four, 13 year olds. Right. So that's usually the next three or four operations is we're just doing communication and whatever plays they know to that point, they'll communicate. And then we'll start doing tempo and trying to, I'll put them on a clock and I'll kind of get the quarterbacks trying to feel what the clock feels like. Cause I always tell my kids, like we, we go fast to go so we can go slow. Because I, I'm not a tempo guy. I actually like to get up and get to tempo because I want to read. I want the quarterback to get used to reading it and going at his pace and then going when he's ready. So it's almost like we go fast to go slow. So and then, and then the last part is blitz pickup. So once we get really good at that, then we'll start doing blitz pickups, communicating the blitzes. Where's the mic? Making the mic call. If you get an early blitz, do, when do we move the running back to take an overhang blitz? Like all that stuff. So it's just all the – Detail stuff that just bothers the shit out of me when I look at tape and I review stuff that never gets fixed. That's what operation is for. It's just, just we said enough. Operation enough. could be any anything that you need to clean up. Could be a play. Could be formations. It could be anything, or it could be whatever you're you're wanting to. You know, I, I don't think it, I, if you've got a team that you play that they're doing something that you don't normally see that could be that. So it could be literally anything that you need to work on. You know what I think? You know, I don't think it's anything. I think it's anything where I feel like the whole team, the whole offense needs to be together to learn. I got it. I got it. Right. 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 Which blitz to me, blitz pick up, blitz pick up is everybody. Right. right. Because if you're in the slot, you need to be calling out jokers, helping the offensive lineman know somebody's coming off the edge. If you're the running back, you need to be calling out an overhang. If you're going to go take it, like all that stuff. So, yeah, we just, to your point, we just added it in, and now it's just a 10-minute period. Every where, where does that go exactly in your in your practice schedule? Right after my EDD. So I'll do settle, pat, and go. That's 10 minutes. We go right into operation. So my first right. – So after your endo period, you do that, right? Yep. We go into okay. operation. Before we split out, and I also kind of like it because before we go into groups and kind of offensive line, we don't see them again for like 45 minutes. So it's kind of nice to, for everybody to get together and kind of have time together to do some stuff and learn together and kind of build some team before, like if we went right off the bat and said, okay, O-line, you go over there and all the skill guys are going to go over here. It's like right away we're kind of splitting everybody up. I kind of like bringing everybody together. With uh, with everyone there, though, Coach, um, I'm kind of curious on this. because I like that. I like that. I'm actually going to steal that from you probably. Um, yeah, I'm going to steal it too. Uh, <laughs> I already put on my uh, work I'm pissed, I'm pissed off I didn't think of it. That's but, uh, my question is, you know, with, with a 10-minute period like that, you say everyone's there. Are you now? Are you switching like, hey, you know, 
going through it and everybody's getting a rep at it? Or are you kind of just having like the ones and twos there and everyone else kind of watch and learn kind of thing? Because I mean, for 10 minutes, it's, it's hard to go through everybody. You know what I mean? You know, especially no, you got 40, 50 guys on there. You know, what we do is the defense gets set up and basically all of our ones, you know, it really just works out because, you know, we've got some defense only kids, right? We probably got six defense only kids and they're, they're on defense. And those are usually our linebackers. You know, we've got enough O linemen that are also D linemen. So they can give us a box basically. And then, you know, what I tell my receivers are, they're usually also our DBs. They'll switch. So I'll say, get your reps on both sides, you know, give each other work and they'll just tap each other out. But I like it because we, we need a defense to look at too. So, um, we're all kind of out there together and, you know, we're swift switching people in and out. Some running back is coming off linebacker and coming in because, you know, I want my top three running backs all to get blitz period reps. So I'll pull them off say, Hey, Hey Nico, go grab, go grab Phoenix. I want Phoenix to get some blitz pickup. He'll jump over to run, the linebacker and now he's doing the blitzes. Right. And so we all kind of get good at it together. Um, you know, you're talking 20 something kids out there doing operation together and then, what, what it did is it ended up bleeding over to defense. My defensive coach liked it so much. We now have a defensive operation period. So then we get set up for him, and he actually does all of his blitz calls. So he's got his orange blitz, his Alabama blitz. He's, he's kind of getting them, and now they're doing it too. They're doing their defensive operation period. So I like that. that, that that's you know. I have to figure out where I'm going to fit it in, but I, I, I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, to me, it's an everyday drill. With, with kids that young – I got first timers, second year players. They don't know. They don't even know splits. I mean, I'm I'm working on splits for a month and a half. I feel like just getting the kids. Some of these kids understand the split I want. So I'm Take glad one. I'm not the only one. We never quit on that. <laughs> Mr. Ron, I have no, a you guys are about. you guys are not the only one. Believe me, it all you, you tell them three. You oh, tell them three feet. <laughs> you tell them three feet, and then uh, then three weeks from there, and it's one foot. So that's yeah. no. I, I have a question. Uh, I probably have a hard time coaching under you because if it's 303, I would never get that. Do you have like an air horn? Somebody keep up with that? Coaches just have this on their phone, you know, this Google Doc. How, how, how does that work when you're, you know, that's very specific. I, I, would, I would be the world's worst about staying on time. So how, how does that work? Does that work for you guys? We personally, we – we had when I first started at the school, we had what we were called the Water Girls a while ago, where we they would actually keep up with the time. And it was a you know, we started at 235 and we were going for 10 minutes. We actually gave them a whistle to blow three times to tell us we're moving to the next one. After we moved away from those kids, uh, we've actually, when we get to a certain point, you know, in that run period, we were like, okay. We've got zoned down. We're bored. We need a water break or something like that. We'll actually stop and take that water break. You know, like uh, Coach Kerry was saying a while ago, because uh, I'm the world's worst, like like you said, Coach. You get a mindset you're not paying attention, and you're already – it's 345, and you're still working inside zone, and you still got to do all this other stuff. So, you know, and like you said, you're messing with – playing with eighth graders, or we are. We're playing with eighth graders, and seventh graders are on another field. And the kids that are standing off to the side, not doing anything, they're over there standing there like, hey, that was us last year. Look what they're doing, you know. And I'm like, hey, aren't you guys paying attention over here? No, oh, Co Co Coach G's doing this over there. I'm like, uh, that's what they're doing. That's not what we're doing. Yeah, that's so, our team too. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Okay, guys, yes, sir. I, I control mine. I, I'm kind of the guy. Um, so what I do is I actually, you know, because of the way I've set up my practice, so, so basically the period is through when you're through. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm watching the clock though. I try to keep myself honest and, and I do, I do, I do get hard on myself. Like if I go over, I'm like, damn it. You know, and I tried to do it a little bit better the next time, but as far as communicating it on the field though, what I do is generally the way mine works, the quarterbacks the receivers are kind of all together for a lot of the time, the offensive lines together for a lot of the time. So I can kind of, they know they need to go from pass pro to inside run. Like, I don't need to tell them because they'll see me switch and they can kind of switch. But anytime that all of us need to know that we're doing something different, I keep a little air horn in my back pocket and I just I just hit it. And that just tells everybody, coaches, players, everything that, hey, we're all coming out. I'll do it for seven on seven. I'll do it for team. I'll do it for stuff where I know like a big group of people need to move. 
is I just keep, it's like a little air horn, like one of those little ones. I just keep them in my back. Honestly, it just kept me from having to run my ass over to the offensive line guys and go tell my coaches, hey, come over here. They just know when they hear the horn, it's like, oh, Coach Coach Kerry wants us all to come over here. <laughs> gotcha. So, yeah. Coach, that's another reason I try and mirror up everything where we're all working the same thing at the same time. So when quarterbacks, running backs are working zone, the old line's working zone, the receivers are working their zone reads. You know, every, everything mirrors up that way. So if we need to come together in the middle of a practice and say, okay, let's put it together. Give me white, give me king. And give me three zone. You know, we can do that type of thing. Right. Okay. Cool. I got I, one last guys... question for you guys. No, no, go ahead. Sorry. Um, what about this is one of the dumb questions I feel embarrassed asking is what about the old school stuff? And I still see people like talk about this on videos and clinics and stuff where they're still doing their version of EDDs, which is like a cone drill, uh, a ladder drill, an escape drill, like all this stuff. Do you guys mess with that at all anymore? Or I haven't, but I was like, maybe one every other day. I, I don't know. I was just your guys' I'll thoughts you, on I'll, it. I'll tell you, the only thing I'm willing to do during my practice is something that builds into my concepts. So if I'm, I don't do any ladder drills. I don't do any, well, actually, my offensive line does ladder drills because they actually practice their moves on the ladder. So they actually are practicing something that goes into their concept. But I don't do stuff with, like, three-cone, wide receiver. What I, You know what I tell my kids all the time? I'm like, each one of you guys, if you're serious about your craft, should have a position coach. And I, I encourage them to. I'm like, my QB has a position coach. He meets, he meets with them. A couple of my wide receivers go to wide receiver coaching or speed training. I said, look, guys. When you're there with them, you need to ask them, hey, what's something I can do before practice to get me ready or get me warm or feel like I'm doing things to practice for my position? And I said, come to practice early and do it, but it's not my responsibility. You need to go out, get your coaching, your individual uh, you know, coaching, that's fine. Come early. I'm here a half an hour early every practice. You can come a half an hour early and do whatever you got to do. I feel the same way about stretching. Like Each one of you guys knows how to stretch your body. Get your body stretched before you come out here. It's not my responsibility, so – I mean, that's just the way I do it. If you're doing something during my practice, it's something that goes directly to my concept. So settle, we'll run settle, and we run it with the left-hand clap. We run it where they're, they're allowed to stop anywhere in the space, and the quarterback's got to throw the off shoulder. We're practicing all the stuff that we're going to use in mesh. I mean, our pat and go, we only do our three-step slant because it's built into a lot of our what we do, and we only do – the fade, the, the no, basically no drop fade because we do that a lot and we do back shoulders. So again, it's like we're only doing stuff that I'm, that I'm going to ask them to do in my concepts. I don't know if that answers your question. But I don't yeah. Do well, what I was thinking of is like using Pat and Go to, because Pat and Go has, that, I kept that, I was talking to Jason, I, I, I dropped Settle and Noose last year. Um, I'm thinking of putting it back. Uh, I feel like a betrayer. <laughs> but um Pat and go we kept and I was thinking of putting in the the cuts and the and the and the cone work with the with the cutting especially on the slant or the corner you know like like putting it in there because what we've done before is just run your route and just get as many reps get as many reps get as many reps get as many reps but I was thinking of slowing my pat and go period down to work on their um their route running I don't know what you guys think about that or you guys should we just keep it Pat and go um, over stuff. Well, I've, I actually, my pat and go period, you know, especially once we get everything installed, um, I actually extend my pat and go period because we will do, we will work the verts and our three step hitches every single day. But if we're working stick that day, I'll have my inside guys running their stick routes and, you know, if we're running out of ace or, um, and then still the outside guys doing the, uh, the verticals and whatnot. And then it's corner, they'll switch up for that. And so I, I'm, I'm actually switching up pat and go a little bit. You know, we will always start off with the verticals and the, and the, uh, and the hitches, but then we'll halfway through that pat and go period, we'll switch it up, say, okay, we're working the stick or, you know, whatever, whatever concept we may be focusing on that day, that's where we're going to run on that. So the slot receivers, instead of having one line of receivers, they'll, they'll get in their, they'll get in their position where they would normally line up an ace or early or whatever we're working that day and run that route and then go and run it on the other side to the other, you know, when they're, when they're uh, completing their pat and go uh, process around. 
So that, that's how I do it. I, I, I extend the pat and go period a little you bit. Know, the only, the only reason I don't like doing that, but there's two reasons. So the first is when I, when I teach like, cause of course there's a certain way you want them to stem their routes, certain number of steps you want for certain concepts. I feel like routes on air is just a better place to do it because the other routes are there. Like for instance, like if I'm running sale and my guy running the six step out route doesn't runs it at eight steps. Well, I can stop them and I can say, look, look at where the go is. Look at where the swing is. You're out of position. You see what I'm saying? Like there's a reason I'm telling you go six steps. The same goes for stick. Like it's just easier for that stick kid to understand if he sees the shoot, I can explain it to him better. In routes on air, he's seeing both where like in, in pat and go, there's no one else there. We're just kind of like on air. And the second reason is, is I like pat and go to be just like exercise. Like I want those kids sweating their asses off. I want kids falling over because they're going so fast and pat and go. And I'll scream. I'll scream at kids because they'll they'll catch a slant and then they'll trot over to go snap on the other side of the ball. I'm like, dude, you want to play Saturday? You got to go. And I tell them, I, I tell them, listen, I tell them first 15, I call it first 15, which is settle and noose, pat and go, and operation period. I'm said, said you want to be a starter? That's where you got to show me. That's it. This is where you're going to show me. Are you going to, do you have the skill? Do you have the heart? Do you have the conditioning? Do you, are you showing up on time? I got kids that don't show up on time. They miss the first 10 minutes of first 15. I tell them all the time. So talk to your mom. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. You're not going to start if you're not here for the first 15. But anyway, so that's why I like Pat and Go. I like them to be going. And I just feel like in that routes on air, you got all the other routes are sitting there. It's just easier to explain to a kid on a Y cross, say, look, you're taking too long to get around the mic. See what I'm saying? Like, look, he's looking He's looking out here first, and you're coming here. You're slow. He's not going to get to you. He's just going to skip you, and he's going to go to the H. And you're not going to get the ball. You know, so I just like it better in uh, routes. Yeah, we, we, we do the same thing. I, I was just – I do it just to try and get – you know, if, if we're working stick that day, just trying to get as many reps as you can, just get them running that Oh, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it as a rep, you know, as, as yeah. just running those routes. Because I'm looking for that muscle memory kind of thing where they, hey – I'm running a sticker. I know exactly what I'm doing, exactly what I'm looking for, because I've ran it a thousand times every day. We've also done the routes on air, but, you know, we talked about a while ago with the formations. We've actually installed that as a formation period as well, where we've got those dots set up at certain spots where we're moving down the field. That way, when we get inside the magic number 25, 30 yards, where that Y knows he's running the corner, he knows, okay, I'm on the far hash. I can get a little bit deeper or I can make a little bit deeper cut by installing formations that way too. I, since you guys brought that up. That's smart. You know, trying to maximize the field, uh, start on one end, just move it down the field. Kind of like we, we did at the very end of practice. Uh, when we go team, that's when we do that as well. I mean, we start on the goal on the one yard line and march our way all the way down the field. Gosh, uh, ten we just got cones set up where we're going to put the, had the ball. So when the kid runs the ball to the closest cone and puts it down, get practice of handing it to the official. We're like, we're handing it to the cone. He represents the official, put it down, spot it. So you don't have things that happen like with the Cowboys this year at the last play of the game, you know, that type of thing happened to you. So that's smart. That's the way you do bandit too. You have like something on the ground. So they just know to go. Yeah, I'm, I'm stealing that because it's I, just, it's just those little, it's little round discs about the rubber, right. they're about the size of a dinner plate. They link. Oh, that's smart. Because I'm always screaming at my coach. I'm like, middle left, middle left, you know, right hash. And then he's running into the guys trying to get the ball down. Exactly. That's so much better to just go ahead and lay it out. Yeah, because that's that's, smart. And, that's we, smart. and we do it the same. And then once you get to the far, the far goal line, you just turn around, flip it over, come the other way. Now it's the opposite way. That's smart. That's smart. Because my script for team is laid out with middle, middle left, right hash middle you can just lay it out the way your script is i love that the, the last smart. water break you have somebody go sit that out because they just lay out there and they grow flat on the ground nobody bothers them yeah. i mean kid trips over and he just picks it up puts it back and, yeah that's smart so. uh, any other questions <laughs> yeah we've been on day one for a while so go ahead you can go ahead with day two <laughs> all right day two almost the same exact thing uh we're just installing something different today so day two, we're installing our four and five GT, which is just GT counter uh, as running game. Um, I'll share this with you. Once we get back to our two back, which is our red and black set 
Uh, the only thing we change running game wise is we bring our second running back in and now it becomes 24 and 25 GT. Nothing changes. It's just how the H gets to carry the ball. Uh, but we've ripped it enough on day two where they know four and five for the offensive line, it's always GT blocking. Two and three is always zone blocking. Uh, that way those kids don't get confused on anything. All they know is, now, oh, the second running back's getting the ball. Uh, we can actually tag it with our quarterback where it's 14, 15 GT. Uh, nobody learns anything different except the quarterback. If I'm giving it to the F, I'm going to give it to the H, or I'm keeping the ball. Uh, that type of thing. Uh, 66 is our uh, quick game for the second day. Uh, we actually install a little bit faster screen. 41 and 51, about 51 to the left, 41 to the right. And we just basically we're telling those guys, fast feet, turn around, the ball's going to be hit kitchen. I tell my quarterbacks, throw it in his face mask. You know, there's no play action to it. You're just turning your hips, and you're now you're a shortstop. Hitting right in the nose with it. That way, if, you know, it bounces off hands, hopefully it bounces out of bounds, or he sees the ball coming. Um, 95, the wide cross play is our deep shot play. Um, I've tried to do six or 97, depending on your terminology of running stuff deep. But at this level, I've got kids that can't throw it, you know, 40 yards. And I'm trying to get that 22-yard cross there. Um, I try and teach them, hey, this is what you're going to do. But, you know, if that, that linebacker drops deeper than you, you can't get over him. Just turn around, sit down right there, 10, 15 yards deep, give me a big hand, and just give your quarterback your hands every time you want the ball. And that's all on day two, Hope our, which would be our equivalent to, if we started on Monday, this would be our Wednesday practice. Uh, sometimes we don't get Wednesday practice. We're blessed where we have a collaboration day with teachers uh, in our school on Wednesdays. So a lot of times we don't get to practice till after that's over. Uh, so that's like at 3.30 to, we get out early. So it's maybe we're out there by 3.30. So hopefully we can practice doing that. If we have to adjust, we'll adjust on that. Uh, but this is all on our second day. Still a lot of stuff. It's a bunch of stuff. Woo. I like it. What does a uh, team look like, you know, as far as, you know, what, what is that period? Is, is that just going to the reps kind of thing? I didn't hear you. Which one? Sorry. Team. Uh, the team, team period, 15. Team, we just, everybody comes together. We put it all together. This is where we were just talking about where we've got the dots set up. Okay, okay, I just want to make sure, yeah, yeah. Because uh, in the past, I've always wanted to signal everything from the sideline. We're, uh, you know, like Coach Kerry said, we're in a hurry, but we want to make sure you're set, make sure, I mean, that's the last thing I tell quarterbacks. You're looking left, right, left, just like you're looking at a stop sign. Make sure everybody's set. Make sure the offensive linemen are set. Um, all 11 kids have read the wristband. We're using the Franklin wristband so it tells everybody what to do on your play. So if it's 95, X has the more, H has the 10 and out or the option around, Y's got the cross, Z's got the dig. You know, everybody knows what to do. It's all together. Uh, and then obviously on day two, now we're in our two back gun stuff. But all we're running is 24 and 25. I'm sorry, four and five the first day. And then when we come back, we'll circulate that back to 24 and 25 GT. And like I said, that way nobody has to learn anything different except the H knows, hey, I'm the second back at the back now. Which uh, which video <laughs> did you explain all this, all your plays and stuff? I, which one was that? I haven't. <laughs> this well, is we, we can get to that. We can get to that. Uh, I don't know. Oh, is that the one in the in the the county? <laughs> the county has that one. Oh no, no, that was that was we were just that was the whole screens. That was just he, he was talking. Oh, about, okay. uh, yeah, that was our screen screen conversation though. yeah the, the county claimed that one I ain't getting that one back <laughs> coach Robbie do you do you like reading that uh more on Y cross that reading that more route to the Y or you like reading the H option to the Y I want to read the H option to the Y I'm, I'm kind of like Ron Mackey I read one two three four across the board okay um, so that more is just a, it's just a peak so really the first progression is the H I was blessed two years ago to have an eighth career that was six four, but he could I could outrun the kid. So okay. it, it so it was just easier to read all the way across. But that H, you know, when we're in our two back, it's the same 
same read. You know, he's, now he's just coming out of the backfield. Fair enough. So, so that that's all on day two ish, quote unquote. You know, what I'm saying. If, hopefully, we get to that. Um, day three. Now we're going trips. Which this would be our Monday, Wednesday. This would be our Friday practice. Got the same things. The only thing now is now it's still zone for our offensive linemen because we're putting in jet. So now they know two and three and eight and nine are always zone blocks. You know, even for an 18, 19 option, it's still zone blocking for our kids. But now we're just going out of a three by one set. Uh, and this is the only time we've had put motion. Uh, one time I put motion in back on day one, but that took a while to get everybody going. So now we're just teaching them, hey, jet you get, fly you fake it. So when we come back on Monday or on Tuesday the next week, that's when we put in our fly motion. They're like, hey, this is just like running eight and nine jet. I'm like, yeah, so if I call fly, what do jets do? They fly. We fake on fly, we give on jet. Is that the only motion you're using or do you put in other motions like I like it? I've, I've done, I call it orbit. You know, we have to bring the back to the backfield. I turn the motion back, kind of like Kansas City does. You know, when they bring the guy in motion, loop around the back and come back. We tried to do that uh, with our officials. They would call legal motion every time I ran that. Really? We dropped that. They said, you can't do that. That's illegal. And one of the, uh, one of the officials is one of our custodians, and he's a big 49er fan. And the 49ers playing the Chiefs or something about a year ago. And the next Monday I went to him, I said, Leon, look, you saw it on, on the game last night. Kansas City ran that motion. And he went around the running back and ran a loop back around. There. He's like, Coach, you can't do that. He's moving toward the line of like, Then why did the officials of the NFL game not call it? He's like, I'll have to go back and check that game. You know, so. But, yes, that's about the only motion I'll, I'll use. Um, unless I want a motion – like our running back out or F to the side, make it two by three or three by two, something like that. But that's about all the motion I'm using. We'll motion our H around the QB. Yeah. It's kind of, it's the read off our inside zone. Yeah. We'll we, motion H. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll do jet motion. We'll, we call it a shift motion where we'll start an ace and we'll shift too early. Or, you know, yeah, or we call we, we also call it a snake motion, which is basically just uh, um, basically like, you know, for example, just send H like uh, it's almost like a screen where he he's he's in, he's in a fly motion or jet motion gets all the way across the formation. He just turns around and looks for a quick pass, basically like a screen. We just call that snake motion. We also use that on the shallow cross because we just couldn't get our our shallow to hit. So we, you know what, we're going to put him in motion, get him already over on the other side of the formation that quicker, that much quicker. Sure. Yeah. And we, 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 when we motion H into the backfield, uh, we call that a jump motion. Jump. So he just basically just jumps. So we'll, we'll shift, you know, from our ace or even our, our three by one set into a two back formation, just like that. And then we'll, we'll run from there. Just to I see how it is. They were, yeah, calling, just, they were calling it illegal probably because you were motioning him from around the other side where the running back was, right? So you had to kind of go around the running back and the quarterback and then go forward to get into position. Yeah. But I think, Jason, you're saying you would just – from the from the weak side, he'd just come right into the H yeah. position in the backfield, and then you're not moving toward the yep. – Yeah. So, I, it's pretty ticky-tack, man. I had, one, I had one referee last year that – told my QB he had to stay he had to stop fake clapping because it's simulating the snap I was like what because he you know he'd like to do one of the because we have a clap so he'd do this just to see if he could get somebody to move he's like ah simulating it's simulating the snap I was like what's the difference between that and going on two I don't understand <laughs> sometimes you just get refs that just I don't know you know whatever I told this story last week. We kicked an onside kick against our biggest rivals, bounced it off the center's head, jumped on it, got the ball. They said the ball didn't go 10 yards. <laughs> I said, well, he had to go 10 yards or he's offside. We get to re-kick. So, you know, like you said, you get some officials, they, they get our level in the NFL and college all mixed up. And Or Thursday afternoon, daddy's out there calling the games, you know. Yep. 
So how much time do you like to, do you like to leave for seven on seven and team? Did, or, are they similar in time length? Do you like a little more time for team? Do you feel like, I know some coaches think too much team isn't a great thing because you get a little beat up. I, I like to have at least 10 minutes at the end. Uh, like I team. said, we're, I'm sorry. For team or both seven on seven and team? For, for team, for team. Teams, I think team's more important than the seven on seven because we're going to run the same plays we would run in seven on seven. Okay. Um, but kind of Mike made the comment a while ago about, you know, you're running the offense, you're the coach, you're going to end practice when you're ready in practice. You know, I used to work for a guy that he said, when my feet start hurting, practice is over. <laughs> right. But he was a wing two guy too as well. So those guys are special. <laughs> are you, are you, um, are you are you going to the ground there in team? Are you just going thud? What, going how do thud. you handle? We're going thud. We're going thud practice. I don't want to, you know. In the last two seasons, we've had no more than fifteen kids because mm -hmm. of COVID and whatever other reasons. Okay. Um, the hardest thing for us was trying to get reps for the offensive linemen. You know, when you got eleven, you got 15, 14, 15 kids. You don't have those linemen to get, to block against. You don't have to on zone. You're trying to get to the next level, trying to teach teach kids what it is to get to the next level. Oh, you you only had 15 kids on the whole team. On the whole team. Oh God, that's hard. Yeah, that's oh. tough. I got I got 34, so I'm we yeah, we so turn kids away. I mean, club ball is different. You got you know, we've always got too many kids. You know, we can, we, we can only field 34. So when we would install running game, I would take my receivers. And take them and put them in as the defensive line. Oh yeah, yeah. That's and then if we then if we had RPOs off of it, we would take one of those guys and we just put him out there and say, okay, run what you've got to run. But now they're running against air, so there's nobody to tackle. Them. Uh, what what about for you guys? How do you, uh, Randy, Mike, Dolly, Jason? What do you got? What do you guys do for team? Do you go? Do you not? Nobody goes to the ground. Thud. How do, you, how do you teach the kids to break down and get to a good position but not take everybody down and get injuries and all that? It's, it's always stud for us. I mean, they, yeah, but, I mean, as far as, you know, are you talking about working on, like, on defense? I just, I, and, I'll tell you why I'm bringing it up. I, we, we have arguments all the time because the co guy I coach with thinks that it should be full go. He wants his defense to, to feel like they're – he's he basically – his point is, and honestly, he's, he's not wrong, is he's like, these are kids, and if you teach them to slow up, and, and, and not drive through and don't run your feet and take people to the ground, they're going to do that in the game. And well, he's like, you're teaching them bad habits on defense just because you want to get a team period. And I'm like, yeah, but coach, we want to make it to Saturday. We don't want to beat ourselves up. You right. know? And so we're kind of going back and forth on it right now. Cause I know last year he made me go full and I hated it. So I, I was telling my kids, I'm like, just don't, don't fight for every yard, go down. You know, you don't want, you want to make it to Saturday, whatever. So I'm just wondering what you guys think about it, how you regulate it. Typically, uh, Tuesday is our defensive day, and um, we are we we have a tackling drill every single defensive day. So that's that's when they're getting their full go, full on hitting there, and they're lining up there. They're you know they're picking their angles. We'll set up different drills where they're working on different angles and whatnot. Um, but as far as team and offense and stuff like that, even even during scout stuff uh, for defense, it's it's still thud because. I don't know about y'all. If we're trying to imitate the other team's offense, <laughs> our starting defense is just blowing it up. Yeah, and that, that's a good way to get kids hurt there too. So we're 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 doing thud even with that. So uh, oh, the only that, time that for sure, that for yeah. sure. I'm talking more like good on good team. Well, we're no, we're I'm typically still... we're not we're not we're not for us. We're not even two platoon. A lot of our guys are going both ways. So I mean. Uh, it, it's stud no matter what because it, it, if it's our first if it's our first offense going, um, you know, typically they're 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 crushing the other, our our defense. So it just. Okay. Do you so. guys have any tips for like if you are going thud, just how to teach kids to do it the right way so they because I feel like there's a way to do thud and still get kids to break down and get into good position and make good contact and just not go to the ground, right? I mean, do you guys yeah. have any any tips, things you've done? Well, uh, for for me. I'm kind of in the same boat as Robbie. Uh, due to COVID and things for the past couple of seasons, I've only, I, we had, but 17 kids in all this past season. Um, so it's kind of hard to simulate things. But as far as team and things like that, I'm more of a defensive person anyway. Um, 
we go thud, but it's like a, a mixture. Like when you're going to hit them, like don't hold up, go, go make a lick like you mean it, but don't take them to the ground. So it's, it's a mixture of, all right, well, you're not, you're not going over there and giving the guy a hug and then you go in the game and it, it can't, right. cause that stuff carries over. That's what, that's, that's, that's the point. Right. So, yeah, it, so with last year we had a guy that that um, and we have him this year as well. He got certified with that um, Seattle Seahawk tackling stuff, and it's it's like four steps. Heads up tackling, yeah, yeah. And then we go oh, the first two steps, and then we, you do not you do not you do not do the last step to bring them down. So you, they get the breakdown and the thing like that and the thud, but we don't we don't. We don't, I, you know, ever since I took over, I don't, I don't like that either because, okay. man, we had kids blown out knees and breaking ankles. Hey, man, I'm going to tell you, I love, as a defensive guy, I love halt tackling because you can, you don't need anything to teach it. Like we, during our COVID season, we were in the gym 90% of the time, but we were practicing tackling because you, it, it's, it's very simple and easy to teach without having to literally hurt somebody. Right. It's only literally a couple steps. Wrap, squeeze, drive for five. That's that's literally it. And you're not gonna kill anybody doing that. Yeah, I like that stuff. Okay. You know, in, in our in our state, we're required. We have to watch that video. We have to pass that test with ninety percent or better. Or we yeah, can't we're, we're required to go and kind of go through the heads up tackling too. So I have that video linked as well. Really? And we watch it. Yeah. All right, y'all going to laugh at me. And I'm glad we had this conversation because this was the main thing I wanted to talk about to, uh, tonight was the curious question about the about what do you do in a team period and if you had a team period. I, and it kind of came up, you know, last week Jason showed the video, you know, some of his practice stuff, which is very, which is good. Um, yeah, I'd like to see more people's practice though. And I'm, and, you know, more practice do, film some more of my practices. But I remember he, when he was showing some of the screen stuff last week, you know, a couple of clips, you know, he goes, well, this guy, you know, cause we questioned Jason about it. And he said, well, this guy was just, you know, he was kind of being the practice guy, you know, cause they knew the play. So it was a wasted rep. If there's one thing I can't, excuse me, I can't fucking stand is a wasted <laughs> rep in the 10 I, 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 it So y'all gonna laugh at me. We don't do team. But we just don't do team for for that very reason. And go back to Carrie's point about call it what you want to thud, not take it to the ground or full. Co- I, I don't think I've been doing this a long time. It, it doesn't matter what we tell our kids; they can't do it. You know, I'm always like I say I'm always like here. I'm always searching for something else because I always want feeling like we wasted half of that team period. Either the running back won't stop when he's wrapped up or the defensive guys to hold him up before an extra guy will come in there too hard, right. you know, or a bigger guy will come come by with a head of steam. And he might try to hold up, but then, then the pile falls over. I yeah. mean, you, you know, and stuff happens. And it's, again, it's just a wasted rep. And it just, oh, I can't, I can't tell you how much that just bothers me. So – we don't, we very rarely do team. You know what we, what we do team for? We just do routes on air offensively that, yeah. you know, or a pat and go period, yeah. you know, or, you know, we call it five and dime. We just want to work on tempo. You know, we're working on specific things and moving it. I mean, different things for different things. Now we do a tackling drill every day. Uh we have 15 minutes of tackling every day and we do, you know, endo tackling and team tackling every day. Okay. Now we will do a run game pretty much every day in, in a group period, you know, we'll do a run game and uh, now we'll take that to the ground. That's live. But if it's like a seven on seven run game that work that t- for us, that works, you know, it seems it, it, that doesn't seem to be a problem. Um, We'll do I, seven on seven point, almost got, every day, and it's usually point. only 10 minutes. By the way, it's usually, live. It's it's usually support- live every day, and it, we don't yeah. seem to have that type of problem about it getting out of hand or, you, you know, 
707 or the run game, we'll, we'll, the coaches will be there and we'll get, a, a, you know, we're telling them, hey, stop on the whistle and we'll do, as soon as contact a wrap up, we'll do the whistle. That seems to, the kids seem to respond to that. But if we do any type of team, 11 on 11, you know, it just sort of either gets sloppy yeah. where if we if we try to say, okay, this is just thud or we're just form tackle or whatever we call it, then the defensive guys will know the plays and it does it just doesn't work. If we get mad and go, okay, we're going to go live, you know, I don't like that either. So we just really don't do a lot of team. We try to do that, a team peer for something different. If we're going to do something, we do it during our end of our doing, doing our group periods, our run or our 707 period, when that's pretty much live most most days. So, you know, that's, that's just well, how we I, do I, it. It's, it's nice it's, that most of you are having the same problems we have. No, we are. And to your point, I was talking to a, a coach that I know and, and I respect him and he feels the same way you do. He, he likes to go live in seven on seven. And he said, he doesn't really have problems. He's like, yeah, we'll go live seven on seven. It's like, it's either a lot, a lot of incomplete passes, a lot of touchdowns. You know what I mean? It's like, there's not the same amount of contact and it's fine. Right. We just let him go. And he's like, when we get together for team, we just do screens and runs. And he's like, maybe once a week, maybe once every couple of weeks, we'll go, we'll open up the playbook and we'll go full live team. He's like, but the thud thing, I just can't get it to work. Same thing you're saying. He's like, I got one kid on offense. It's like, he's pissed because he's like, I'm letting up and you're going full. And now I'm, I look like a big puss because I got run over in front of, my, you know, they're all going, ooh. And he's like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm slowing up. It's supposed to be thud. And it's like always a freaking right. problem. Yeah, 12 and four, Yeah, they just can't seem to get it. Now we will do, we call it charger drills sometimes on Tuesdays at the end of practice. We'll script six plays. To, we'll put it on the 10 or well, usually on the 15 I just make it hard and I give us four downs and we either you know there's a winner or loser so that's that's really what so that's that's the last of practice and that's you know the loser team wins the winning team goes in early you know and, and that sort of thing and we'll just do it six plays you know if the, if the defense stops us uh we'll go inside if the offense if, if we score on the first play we're done I, I mean you know so th that's that's we feel like we get what we need accomplished during that one time a week. And some of the weeks we don't do that. You know, we'll just do that once every couple of weeks. And of course, they're always wanting to know if we're going to do that. They, you know, on Tuesday, they want to want to know if we want to do charger drill, but the other doesn't really work for us. And it sounds like it, it, I'm glad that you guys are having the same problems we do. I just don't think sixth, seventh and eighth graders, like you say, know how to do that properly. Yeah. Well, I, I the guy I coach with his, he's right. like, his solution is just let him go live all the time. <laughs> go I, have <laughs> all the time. <laughs> I have a question based off of Mike's perspective. Um, for this level, I'm, I'm assuming everybody coaches between little league and middle school. Um, off of your perspective, Mike, do y'all feel like team period would be more so offensive based? But meaning, so say if I'm a wing T team. All right, wing T, I need to be – I feel like that would be more beneficial to have 11-on-11 11 11 because you got to know who to block. Whereas I'm assuming most of you guys are air raid. You ain't playing Ray Lewis or Brian Erlach at linebacker. So most of those kids, you're going to you're gonna occupy them with just a simple jet motion. All right, so do you feel like it would be – team more so at this level is offensive specific or – is it something that's necessary? Because like, like I said, if y'all guys are air raid teams, you're not the, – the guys you're facing, they're not going to be elite defenders or they're going to barely know how to defend the pass. Versus a wing T team, when you get them, they're going to crowd the box with that 6-2. So it's kind of necessary to have an 11-on-11 11 11 period because you need to know who to block. Well, I, again, I, I finish, we don't we we don't do a lot of team period. We just do our stuff mainly. We'll do an endo every day. We'll do a group every day, and then we do usually, you know, run game seven on seven. And if we do a team period, it's usually routes on air, pat and go, and that's kind of how we end things uh, offensively. Def so when we go to defensive practice. Uh, uh, the same thing. We usually have uh, you know a tackling drill, uh, and a group, a defensive group period, and then they go straight to team. But it's not very long. 
we just make sure we cover the formations. We don't we don't line up and make that make that team run ten times the jet, defending the jet sweeps. If we defend it right the first time and everybody run, does their run fit, we won't sit there and just do it over and over and over again. And I think that's where we also get in trouble is wanting to keep running it over and over again, both offensively and defensively. You know, if we if we get it right the first time, that's it. If we get it right the first time defensively, as long as we feel like we know what we're doing, we don't sit there and make them do it five times in a row. You know, so again, our team period, even for defense, I think that's probably more important. I mean, yeah, obviously you've got to have all, you know, um, you know, depending on the defense and particularly most of the teams we play have a tight end. And so you got to line up, you know, the tight ends moving right or left, you know, trip, you, you know, you've got to get your alignment right. You can only do that, you know, when you do a team. But even our team period is really short and it's designed like here's it's, it's not designed to, to really hit. It's really designed to formation and make sure we're doing our fits. And sometimes we'll, we'll blow the play, play dead even before the offense runs gets through with the play because we can see everybody's doing the run run fit we're we're cutting everybody off we're yeah. going where we're supposed to do you know we don't try to spend a lot of time doing again unnecessary stuff and wasting reps that's that's our main thing it's just wasting reps yeah and i i randy i my perspective is this all right so my defensive coach sees team period different than me so he sees team period as this is our chance for my dudes to learn how to be dudes. Let's go out there. This is when they're going to become dudes, right? Is when they're competing on defense, they're flying around, they're making tackles, they're intimidating. They're in the right. Sure. Are they in the right spot? Do they have their assignment? Are they in their zone? Are they, are they getting their calls or did they make the right blitz? It's a little bit of that. It's more. He also wants to instill toughness. He wants them to be able to get to the ball and make a tackle. The way I see team is all assignment fits it's like i want my quarterback to see that the corner is off or he's in cloud or he's in press that's going to change what he does that's what that's air raid right i mean my guy's going to go left if it's if it's press he's going to go right if it's if it's cloud or off you know so he needs to get looks same with with same with my run game my run game is a lot of calls you guys know i run gt counter based on where the three technique is i told you guys that last time so I want my my center to see a couple different. He want I want to see a five man front, over front, under front. So for me, it's Randy answer your question. We're just we just see it differently. I want to get I want to get reads and fits, and I want to communicate and I want to make the right calls and you know audible out when we can and get all that repetition going. And he wants to go and he wants to smack somebody. You know he wants well, you to know, build, I, he wants I to build a couple dogs on defense. You know I can't say I can I can see more. So to add into what I said is based off of who you're playing and how they're going to defend you. You know we we see the six two defense literally, which is still basically a four four. You see that basically every week, regardless of what we line up in. That's what they're coming out in, and they ain't st- shifting out of it. That's what it is. And majority of the teams we play, Jason, you know, the, the Tarboro offense, that T, that's what we see every week almost. So I, we're, we're a mixture of things of what we do on offense. I just – I got to meet with my assistant coach on Tuesday, and I've, I've been kind of thinking about, man, like honestly getting rid of that period because it 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 really never done anything for us. Like we'll – and I say that because you can't, you know, you're not watching film on these guys. You can sit here and simulate the 6 2 defense all you want to until you get in front of it. And then now that guy that runs a 4 4 and your lineman's over there, he's at defensive end and he's blowing past your lineman every time. How are you going to know that he runs a 4 4 until you see that guy on game day? Because I'm not watching film. But yeah, I've just simulated all week that my lineman's going to block this guy. Yeah, Joe, no, I agree. I think you're right. Randy, Joe, Joe Daniels, I think, has a couple podcasts a while back where they're talking about not I liking to not like weeks. Yeah, they, they don't they don't like the eleven on eleven either. And I was thinking about that as well. What uh we do is you know, especially with defensive team period, um once, once we're in, in season after after a defensive coach has installed what he wants to install, assignments, alignments, and all that, um, we use it for two things, basically, and that's review on what we're going to be doing, you know, so we'll walk through 
coverages and walkthrough formations that we expect to see. And then the team period is, um, is basically just scout. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll have scout offense and scout offense there and we'll run through certain things. And like, like Mike said, you know, we, we, we're not going to get, we're not out there getting, trying to get somebody hurt. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll run through the play, but it's still not taking many ground because we had the tackle drills to kind of, you know, test their manhood there. So, but that's how we use team period. But here's an alternative to team for offense that we used a little bit. I don't, unfortunately, I don't have any film of this um, is we would kind of treat it as the bandage where you start at one goal line, go down, go down to the other goal line and kind of go back and forth. We would go have our offense line up and uh, yeah, basically like that. And the first time down, we would have just the path, just the defense lineman and maybe one linebacker acting like a pass rush. So we'd go down and say, okay, this is, this essentially we're going to run through our plays, but they're, you know, the defensive line, they're coming, they're coming full go. So protect the quarterback. And then we, we would march down the field that way. And then the next, next way down the other field, we'd put uh, basically be a moving seven on seven. Essentially without a, without a, without a defensive line, we'd go back and forth. How many, how many we can get out of that. And that would be our team period as opposed to just going straight on 11, 11, because the biggest problem I run into, and I talked about this before is once we start, once the kids know that, know the plays, you get those kids that act like, Oh, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to make a play on, on defense. I'm just going to show out. We call those guys practice heroes. We don't need any practice. Heroes. And so, and I, and that, and that pisses me off more than anything is those kids. And we tell them, don't be a practice hero. You're not impressed them as being a practice hero, but still they don't listen and they still do it. So we, we, we ingrain in their head early and often that if you're going to be a practice hero, you're going to be, you're going to be really, really accustomed with the sidelines of the field that you're going to be running along with. Uh, so I got kids will do it in quit game. Yeah. It, like, it, it, it drives we're literally me just, we're literally just, I'm like, I just need you out there for a look. Like you exactly. literally exactly. only running one play over and over again. He's like, no, no coach, but I got to jump in. <laughs> and literally you tell him, and then two minutes later, he's doing what you just told him not to do. It's, I'm like, we're running corner 10 times in a row. I, so that, that was one perfect. thing that helped us is, well, you know what? I'm going to eliminate the 11 on 11 and we're going to focus, you know, as far as, as far as full, full on reps, you know, the, the offensive line is going to get their pass protection working and we'll even do run. We'll even do run game in there because, you know, with zone block and everything like that, you're, you're looking for the double teams in the front four or front five or whatever it might be. Um, so they're getting their work. And then, um, coming back to your, to your point, you're, you're, you're going hard where you need to go hard with screens mm -hmm. and runs. Maybe that's all you need screens yep. and runs. You need bodies to block. So and then the receivers get their work as far as coverage and beating the coverage, uh, on the next way down. Good point. Robbie, you're, what are you using that period for then? This is what we'll do with team at the, toward the, after the $3 three, I can't talk to you. Sorry, guys. Uh, after we've installed everything after the third day, this is what we use as our team period is our bandit drill. Uh, one way that I defeat the, the scout team heroes is what we call them. You know, the, the guys that you guys are talking about is that we we have everything on the wristband for the kids, but we only have 11 wristbands. So that kid, if he sees white two, he doesn't know what white two is because it's on the wristband. Uh, that's one way we eliminate the scout team hero where he's not seeing me go, you know, white, and he knows I go like this and smash. He knows here comes 91. Or we run Ohio, he doesn't hear the play call. The quarterback is constantly calling out, you know, just the formation, which is on the wristband, and then the number with the play. So the number of the play doesn't mirror up with the wristband. Um let me see if I can find this. Just... Oh crap! Wait, Robbie, I just realized something. Are you calling? Wait, 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 are your formations matching up with the color on the wristband? Yes. Oh crap! So you don't call early and late and trips and all that? No. Dude, what a that's awesome. This is. I this, just realized that. Here, let me let me see if I can close this and I'll pull that screen back up for you. Hold on, just a minute. So we're we're actually calling the same thing as our varsity. Uh, can you see? Can you guys see this now? Yes. No. Maybe. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So, so this is the quarterback's wristband right here. So if we're if we're signaling white and we go white zero, 
he just calls that white zero, and they were all eleven players look at the wristband and they look for white zero, which you know, being right over here, and that tells them what it is. So it, 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 there, there's no correlation with it. Uh, even when we play um, crosstown, we have two crosstown rival teams. This is a little bit different than what they do. One team, uh, we all use the wristband because the varsity uses the wristband. We all call it a little bit different. Uh, the town, the team downtown numbers the wristband one to a hundred, and they and they color code theirs too. But it's uh, play one or play ninety nine, and it's by color as well. But the colors tell the kid the formation, so they know if they see me signaling uh, red, 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 and then we get the number. They're on their way to red while they get the plate number or the off of the wristband. And then we can get, then we can go slow as slow down as far as we want. So if I want to call purple, and, and we also use cue cards where we get, you know, uh, take like poster board and cut it into four pieces and then laminate it and put them front to back and have a kid that's standing on the sideline or an equipment girl or water girl and stand there and hold it. And they're seeing purple, purple, purple. They know, hey, let's go to purple and coach is going to give us the number off the wristband. And it's only 10 plays per color. Uh, there's times where we like crap. I wish I'd add to that this week. And you know, you just got to go with the 10, 12 plays you have that week. You can't, unless you go to halftime and say, Hey, we're adjusting this. Um, so you change, you change this every week? I have. And then after this, about the second week, I'm like, Oh, no. <laughs> what we'll do is we'll adjust the formation. So if I'm in white or you know, we signal white stack. So that tells my receivers is stack. It's the same formation. Nothing changes except those receivers know we're going to stack. Uh, you no, if you want to call a no play, how do you do that? We put on the wristband. We have code words. We have code words that go with it. Um, this past year, I've coached against two of the kids that I used to used to have on my team when I coached varsity, and they know my code words for it. So I, I've had to put that on the wristband too. So even in practice, if we, you know, if we want to run frosty, you know, it's whatever formation. So say, for example, we're in red and we go red four. They, it says frosty on the wristband. The kids know what that code word means. Okay. All right. Gotcha. So coach Jolly, does it help you? We yeah, it's really using, cool, man. We started using wristbands in practice, but we never used them on game day because we never played the same team twice. They never got our signals. But we used it for team because we had so many guys jumping our stuff. So we just – we used – actually, for something really simple you got here, but it's funny. We only used it in practice. <laughs> well, I, just to keep but, the defense from knowing what we were doing. <laughs> well, that was the thing. We're playing against two crosstown rival teams, and they're running the same thing that we're – we're supposed to be running from varsity defensively. So it's kind of funny. Our kids come over and they're like, coach, they're running scout. They're running scout on, on the secondary. Why are they running scout? Because that's what our secondary calls it, cover two. Or they're running something else like ice or something. They're like, they're running ice, coach. I was like, I know they're running ice. They're, they went to the same coach as me we went to. You know, they, they, they learn coach the same thing we do. <laughs> that's funny. We, we definitely don't have that. Yeah, so you got everybody doing the same stuff. We're supposed to be doing the same stuff, theoretically. You know, the head coach said, you know, we went to the meeting about four years ago when the new coach got here and said, okay, guys, we want – this is our base. This is what we want you guys to teach them. But anything outside of the base, that's up to you guys. But here's the wristband that the varsity uses. I've changed mine up a little bit. The team downtown has changed theirs up a little bit. But it helps, you know. That way you can adjust, like you don't have the strong safety up there saying, hey, they're running Ohio because they know the signal from Ohio. Got By it. reading the wristband, you can go faster, you can slow down. Got the it. only thing is if you don't have it on the wristband, you you know you have to call a timeout or the kids have to already know it. Um, cool. go, go ahead, sorry. So that's cool. Yeah, yeah it's good stuff. 
And like I said, there's only 11 of them. So if a kid gets hurt, we're, we're ripping his wristband off of He's helping one off the field and saying, hey, give me an next receiver. Who's, who's responsible for keeping up with the wristband? Do they turn it into a coach after the game or something? You? They, they turn it into me every day after practice. And then that way I can go, I can go lay them out in the quick room, let them dry. Uh, we do this on Saturdays or Sundays. How bad do they smell? Sorry? How bad do they smell? How bad do they smell? Pretty bad. <laughs> Pretty bad. Pretty bad. I mean, the, so the O line was so the O line, so each position will see only their so the O line will see their protection. The receiver sees their route. The right so in other words, not everyone doesn't just see the play, they see their exact there's your left there's, your left, there's your left tackle sheet. Yeah, so <laughs> And this Got one it. actually has our freeze call off of purple. Got it. Oh shit! So when you when you update these up wristbands, bands, you got to update each assignment for each play on each band. Ugh. Oh my god! Good god! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> all you, you got to do is copy, copy and paste it. That's good you though. You got to figure it out. And there's a and you talk. We talk about Coach Mummy and his small play sheet. There's your play sheet. It's it's a three by five in this card. Yep. I mean, I I even wear a wristband myself because I'm I always make like thirteen of them because I'm kind of paranoid that the quarterback or somebody's going to lose theirs. So I give the offensive line coach one. I I keep one. The receivers coach keeps one. Um, you know, and then we break down the ideas where this is called the mummy sheet, where we actually break down the field. This is so we talk about later where we break down the field positions on the field. So I if we're do, I do this too. Yeah, I do this too. This is great. It helps so much on game day. Especially if you're going in a really big hurry and you just look down and it's like, okay, purple zero, purple zero, you know, that type of thing. It's you can so go on so much faster. Yep. And the and the and uh, like Ron Mackey said yesterday, if you read this enough. Throughout the year, by you know the second game, the kids know what you're going to call once you're inside the goal line. You know they they know it's going to be option. They know it's going to be we're going to front free somebody and get a free uh, five yards. They know we're going to run counter. Friends of of Coach Mummy is if you go back and watch the spring league from last spring, the one that they won the championship. You know he's still carrying that three by five index card, and he's just tagging it too. I mean. Even in the uh, uh, not the XF the XFL when they were in Dallas, we wrote yes. It's the I was going to say that Robbie. There's a there's one of those games. I was I was dumbfounded. Mummy's calling Blue ninety two, and he's got this little thing. And then there's a guy, the other team. The guy was up in the booth, and he had a, it was like the most. It was like uh, what was the guy that always had the uh, complicated West Coast plays? It, it sounded like it was like a whole paragraph. Well, remember yeah. back. Remember back to Sean Payton when he got to New Orleans. He had the Sound like uh, Gruden. Gruden had some crazy plays. Well, the Gruden, you know, the West Coast guys, because their terminology talks to everybody. <laughs> right. You know, if you call Blue ninety two, everybody knows what to do. Then you tag tag with, you know, Blue ninety two, Z Cougar, Z Panther, or just Panther, and the guy, the only guy, one guy knows what Panther, and one guy, one guy knows what Cougar is. It doesn't change anything to the quarterback. It's the same play. He just know now Z has the poster. He has the corner. Right, right, yeah. and we right. can make it as complicated as you want. You know, you could put it on a, a piece of poster board, or I just carry, like I said, I just carry one. This band right here, that's the quarterbacks. Um, if I can get back to it, I also only I only script like eight or nine, ten open field plays. Like I, by by third quarter, I'm usually going by field. Or, right, I mean. This, usually this is all I'm carrying. I'm wearing a wristband just like the quarterback, and I'm just walking up down the sideline. You know, I may laminate my that other sheet, put it in my back pocket, just to have something to draw on. Yeah. During the game, saying, "Hey, let's make this adjustment. Hey, let's look at this," or to draw up their fronts. I'll give it to our receivers coach and say, "Hey, here's an expo. Draw up what front they're doing. When we line up in white, are they in three? Are they a three to the field or a three to the boundary? You know, like you said, Terry, which way we're going to run GT?" That's only, you know, that's the only thing I'm carrying with me. Mm -hmm. 
Robbie, you had mentioned um, you watched Coach Mackey. I'm pretty sure you and I watched the same video. Um, I'm kind of curious about your three-day install. Just um, Is it kind of similar to what he talked about, where day one is equal to day four, day two is equal to day five? Yeah, same thing, same thing with us. I was kind of curious. So you kind of go back over it again. Yeah, this is Coach Mackey's. I've started keeping a notebook in the offseason every year of, you know, ideas for the spring. And yesterday I filled up, let me count this real quick, five pages of his stuff. And it's the exact same thing he did. Yeah. Um, like, like I said, that sheet that I showed at the beginning was uh, Coach Colthorpe's that we got from him off of his. And we just put our stuff in it. That's all it was. I have, I, I do a two-day. I mean, it's a bit similar. Okay, you're moving on now. Two-day, two-day install? You, you, yeah, I mean, we'll do – we'll do. Um, we only have two quick games. So, one's on one day, one's on the other. And then we have um, – two screens one's on one day one's on the other we have um really just two runs and then we have we have six pass game but we do three on routes on air one day three on the other what uh what quick... oh, no i'm sorry that's wrong no we have six total so the two quicks and then we do two routes on air on each day so like one day will be like corner mesh and 95 the other day will be stick 94 four birds and then one day is zone day and the other day is gt day so i just do the two day and i just have two screens i, I run i run the outside screen the now screens the receivers and i run the slow screen to the running back i mean that's that's all i do so i don't need that third day really so i just do that two day we get to but do any of the rest of y'all get time over to work what was that randy do any of y'all other than uh, other than us get time to do work over the summer? Maybe are I you get, alive? Yeah, I get summer. I get summer. I, I'm sure Carrie does too, but I get I can I can meet with them as much as I want. Not this guy. We pretty much start in May. We go all the way through the summer. Yep, we start in June. Depending on how many guys show up. Will determine the the install period for us. See, that's why I'm upset because Randy Randy's in North Carolina, same as me, and I don't get that. Oh yeah, for club ball, like you'll get you'll get a lot of kids that come in May, April, and May, and you can work with them. But you really don't have your team together till July. At least I don't. So like, I really start installing like real in like for instance, we're starting our spring our spring ball in two weeks. I'll get some of my kids. And we'll do some routes on air. So I'll teach them. Some of my kids have already done it. So I'll be like, all right, 94 routes on air. And I have enough kids that know how to do it. And then the other kids will come back and be like, oh, this is cool. And they learn and they do it. So we'll do like little stuff like that. But it's not really install, right? It's more like conditioning. You know, we're doing some stuff. And you don't even know what position these kids are playing yet. We really don't start our install until July after July 4th. We get together as a team. That's when we pick the team. We've made our cuts. We get our team together <laughs> July. Oh, is this like a – like a pop Warner type thing yeah or? well we're we're in YFL down here but yeah but yeah see, I, I did the rec department where I live at for the first time this year and it was a challenge because you go from all right you go from having the kids at the school to kids that I did 11 and 12 group and I mean they're essentially the level below them but it takes a whole lot more work for them than the kids at the school as soon as you lose that little bit of a folk, it's over. It, it's, it's done. And, and you find yourself wanting to teach the same concepts that you do at the school, but they don't get a grasp of it as fast. So then it's, you're starting to scramble. All right, well, now what do I do? They're, they're not picking this up. So now what? Now you find yourself in the middle ground. Well, at least for me, because I had never done Little League football before. Well, down here in South Florida, <laughs> all the best kids – they don't play in middle school is not a big thing down here. Like nobody yeah, plays yeah. middle school ball. Like they're all well, AYFL, NYFL flow. I mean, these are like some of the best freaking travel teams in the country. I mean, these, these teams are crazy. Oh, that's um, different. Yeah, yeah, that's different, different down here, man. I'm telling you, Miami and Broward is crazy with the, with the club ball. So no, we, we, we're able to, we'll start. I'm able to pretty much, once school ends, I'm able to set 
when we start and when I normally get with our with the varsity coach because we're kind of at their disposal we get to take them to the weight room over the summer and we'll try we'll try to introduce them to weightlifting with no weights on the bar introduce them to simple stuff like squat and uh bench maybe touch some dumbbells but overall depending on how many guys we get out which we usually get a good number of guys out we can install everything over the summer and once tryouts actually start we're rolling like we 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 got everything we need to I mean other than the guys coming in who wasn't there over the summer having to learn but most of the guys that are going to be your key guys we're rolling we, we it's practice now for them it ain't really an install period Jason, you just gotta get them to change the rules, man. I I, I asked, and you know they. Said, I can tell you. It's always been doing doing been done this way, so I've and I said you know, I I'm not gonna step on your toes, I'm not gonna ask questions, and it is what it is. I can tell you for surely, Jason. It is not in the hand. It is not illegal, man. Is it is in the handbook that you are allowed to have summer workouts. You just cannot have no contact and no football equipment like so you can't have dummies and stuff like that but you can have summer workouts no uh, it's somewhere in the county uh, that, that that they're claiming that it's not a, you know it's not a state thing by north carolina it's 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 county county uh, i try to follow everything by the handbook man but i have a copy of it and i i've read it and it is not illegal in north carolina for you to do it you just can't can't do stuff like the varsity team do, right? They that you can have workouts, you just can't. They try to say not football specific, but I mean the the you read between the lines, just no dummies, no no not football practice, basically, basically seven on seven. So you, you can, can have, you, you can have you can football, ball, right? Yeah, you can have football. You just no contact, no helmets, no none of that, nothing that you will. Pra- Pretty much, you can't follow the same thing that the varsity do. Well, well, I don't know about now, but when I was in high school, you got helmets and stuff over the summer, closer towards August, but you got helmets and stuff. Whereas for the middle school, you can't do that. Y'all don't use, y'all, y'all don't use helmets if y'all don't, if y'all do seven on seven in the summer. Nope, you can't use no football equipment during the summer. No shoulder pads, mm-hmm. no helmet, no nothing. You know, I know a couple of years ago out here, like. We had so many kids get injured facially, get teeth knocked out and stuff at seven on seven where they were talking about, uh, like he said, handing out helmets to the kids just for seven on seven. You know, just, I know there's the, what do you recall them, those? Guardian, um, guardian, guardian like soccer balls, you know, so talking about, but that's still in the Yeah, we have those. So it's a great tool. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, if you uh, got nothing else, I'll see you guys later here. Uh, and uh, we'll get maybe another one going next week if we can. Tags. <laughs> tags. You want tags. He wants tags. So I got, I'm got. i making a list. I, mean, I got stick, tags now. I don't know. You just you have to maybe put like a like a survey or something like that or a poll on uh, on the group to see what they want. Motion. If you don't. Motion. You want motion too? More motion. We got to do more things. motion. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm writing down the list now. So, <laughs> one last thing if you don't run fade out, I highly recommend it. Well, that's yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about putting fade out. So, we're going to talk that. Uh, so, I, I, have, I have not put it in. So, listen, that's man, that fade out was especially the best back formation you see us run was fade out route open every single time. Yeah. I figured it would be. It's, 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 it's like taking candy from a baby, really. Four verts and fade out was our top two passing plays we scored on this. As you hit him with enough four verts out of the stack formation, they all just start bailing. And he hit that at like he going to run deep and cut straight to the house. It, I love it, man. It's forever in the playbook. Yeah, we'll talk about that for sure. So let me know about some other things you guys want to talk about. We'll, we'll, get, it, we'll get it set up. All right, fellas. Have a good night. Have a good night, guys.